All right, so I haven't really been as active as I normally am with making videos. And one of the reasons is, is I've been looking more into stable diffusion. I just thought of something interesting to kind of spend time looking into. And I noticed that there is this library. I'm sure a lot of you people already have known about this, but there is a GitHub repo called automatic one, 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 one. And inside of here, there is a web UI you can basically run. You just clone this repo and kind of get it all set up. I'm using Mac and luckily they have some examples of how you can get this working on Apple Silicon. I have an M1 Air, uh, MacBook Air. Um, so I kind of follow these steps. I made sure I had all of these things installed by using Brew and then I cloned the repo. Um, and I had to basically run this web uh, UI command. And when you do that, it's going to load a locally running stable diffusion. So let's see if I can kind of get that going real quick. I'm in my stable diffusion library here. Now I did have to kind of modify one of the files. There's a file called web UI Mac OS .env, or hyphen env sh. I had to go here and add reinstall torch. Um, I believe that's all I had to do, but if you ever run into issues, you can try doing that. But once I modified that, you can basically do dot slash web UI sh, and that'll load up your stable diffusion web UI on your laptop. And you can basically go to the URL in your browser and start running stable diffusion. Um, I've had run into some issues with it. Um, it's kind of slow on my Mac because I guess I don't have CUDA set up, uh, C-U-D-A, I think that's like an NVIDIA thing. But once it's fully set up, you get a URL down here. If you click it, it takes you to the Stable Diffusion UI. Pretty easy to use. Um, there is another step that you have to basically follow to install the different models. So if you go to installation on Mac, they tell you that you have to kind of download some of the popular models. I installed this inpainting one. I don't know what the difference between these two are. I'm assuming the inpainting works better for actually doing the inpainting stuff. Uh, but you basically go to Hugging Face, you go to Files, you find the CKPT file, you download it, and you have to put that in the directory that they tell you to. I think it's in like a models directory um, right here. It says put them right here. Honestly, just read the readme. You don't have to even watch this video of me talking. Read the readme and it tells you exactly how to get going. But I want to share with you why this is pretty cool. Um, once you install your model, you can actually go to like inpainting. And I'm going to go ahead and just go to like image to image here. And I'm going to click an image of myself. Let's see if there is an image of myself somewhere. Let's just go to GitHub and go to Cody Seibert. Go ahead and grab this image real quick. Let's see if I can do something with my face. So <laughs> grab that picture of myself and then go ahead and grab it. Um, now the things you can do with stable diffusion is you can type in a prompt and it's going to take your image and try to modify the image to match your prompt. So if I want to like give myself, I don't know, an extra ear or some horns or something, I could potentially do that. Um, so I'm able to try doing that. I want to show you the inpaint feature, which I think is pretty cool. If you actually click inpaint, upload your image, you can draw regions for where you want stable diffusion to kind of modify the picture. So for example, up here in the top right, if I wanted to remove this image of this, this there's like a, a picture frame on my wall. If I wanted to remove this, go ahead and just draw over that. And honestly, it's just fun playing around with this stuff for a little bit and just like, you know, see what the AI can do for your images and whatever. So once you modify and add a mask over the region you want to modify, you can come down here and I could say, I want to inpaint only the mask area. There's a bunch of different sampling methods. Honestly, they all kind of converge to usually the same image, just in different ways. People say that DDIM is a good starting. Um, at the very bottom, there's one that's hidden from my screen. It's called DDIM. Uh, I would just stick with like Euler or Euler A or something. It doesn't really matter. Just play around with this stuff. But from what I've noticed when you're doing inpainting, the important thing is the higher denoising strength is, the more unlikely it'll be with your original input image. So if, if we want to remove something from the image or completely change something from the image, I've noticed that if you put the denoising strength higher, um, it'll kind of remove that stuff because it won't worry about the input image. I think the default's like 0.8, so you can try playing around with that and see. Also the CFG scale, these are the most important things that you need to worry about typically. Um, the CFG scale, the higher this is, the more it takes the prompt into consideration. So if you do like a one, no matter what you type into this prompt, it just won't, it won't care about it. So for example, if I want to say remove the picture frame, uh, that's it. I'll just say remove the picture frame. So the higher the CF, CFG scale image is, so for example, if I did like a 12, it's going to really look at that prompt and take that prompt into consideration when it does the weights of your, um, of your run.
I only know the surface level of stable diffusion. I just wanted to play around with it because I do think it is pretty cool since I've been kind of messing around with the Dolly API and stuff. So let's just go ahead and click generate. And this will take quite a while on my MacBook. It usually takes like a, a minute or two, but I think if you have a really strong C GPU, I think it'll run a lot faster. I do have a desktop computer downstairs I'm trying to get set up. Um, to, yeah, I think it has like a, I think it has like a Radeon graphics card. I don't know how much memory it has on the graphics card, but I think the more graphics card memory you have, the faster the stable diffusion stuff can run. And it really starts getting really slow when you start like increasing the width and height of your output image. And sometimes you have to increase your sampling steps depending on the sampling method you pick. I think people say Euler is pretty good. Not Euler, I think it's Euler is the way you pronounce his name. But I think 20 is like the recommended for that sampling method. But depending on the sampling method you pick, you'll have to change your sampling steps to get like a, a better outcome. Um, but notice here, it didn't even remove the image. It actually, uh, it actually just put a picture in here. Before this wasn't even here. Now it added a picture frame. Um, so maybe I'll just say, maybe if I describe the mask better, I could say like a blank tan wall with no picture frame. You can also do negative prompts. So like if I want to say picture frame, um, wall ornament, I, I don't know what else I can even describe this, square. Um, but what you could also do is, again, the denoising strength, I think because I pointed eight, it's still thinking that it wants to keep that rectangle there. So I'm going to put it all the way up to a one. I'm going to try to run it just one more time and see what happens. There you have it. It basically completely removed the that little picture that was in my thing, and it just kind of overrode it. So it's really cool. Um, just the fact that AI can do this, like machine learning, it can just manipulate pictures and do what it needs to do to your pictures. I think it's pretty cool. Um, that's what it used to look like before, and now it has absolutely nothing. So if we wanted to further modify that, you can do send to inpain again. And like you can further modify your picture. I've noticed that that seems to crash my my um, the web UI. I have to like restart it when I touch any of these buttons. Like I have to save the image and then I have to like refresh my page and upload it. Kind of I don't know if it's just a Mac issue or if it's like this web UI thing just has bugs. But let's just try one more prompt just for fun. Let's see if I can change the color of my shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a mask over my shirt here, and I'm gonna change the prompt a little bit. I'll say a man wearing a green shirt because I'm wearing a green shirt in this webcam right now that you can see. I'll say a man wearing a green shirt. I won't do any negative. Let's see what it does to my shirt when I run this. I think I might keep the denoising strength the same as one and then the CFG scale is 12. Let's just go ahead and run it and see what it does to my shirt. I think it should change it to green I hope. But there's also a lot of cool things you can do. You can like you can take an image and you can like turn it into like anime style. You can take an image and like make it um, I don't know, super photorealistic. You can make it like 3D rendered. I could change the style of my skin to be like iron or wood or bronze or something. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the end paint feature. And there's also like the image to image feature as well. And I haven't even talked about the text image. That's basically where you provide a prompt and it's going to basically generate images based on a prompt. I think that one's cool as well, but I do like the end painting a little bit more because you can like take images and like modify them. I think that's really cool. Um, so if you were to go outside and like take a picture of something and you want to like remove a trash can that was in your picture, you could do it with this in paint. All right, so there you go. I have a green shirt now. It looks a little vibrant. It doesn't really match the color scheme of the picture. So you could potentially come in here and tweak a little bit. You could be like, I don't want vibrant colors. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. It's like, uh, I don't want vibrant colors. I could also change it to a darker green, but let's just try doing this. You can also reduce the uh, sampling steps if you don't have enough time you want to like just see what happens if you change it to 10 it should take half as much time all right it gave me like a polo shirt okay so it kind of like upgraded my shirt a little bit um it didn't listen to the vibrant colors but again i think the the higher your sampling steps are the the more accurate it'll be to like make it what you want i thought i'd just kind of share that with you all if you guys are interested in playing around with this yourself again it's free you just go to this repo you follow the instructions you download it you set up your model and you can start running it um, if you have like a, a decent GPU or a decent CPU, it takes like a minute to generate images. But just wanted to share with you all, that's kind of what I've been playing around with. Um, but I'll probably get back to like normal coding stuff soon. I just think AI is pretty cool and just learning about this stuff. And again, the whole reason I'm kind of looking into stable diffusion is because I'm using the Dolly API for generating all of these icons for my little SaaS project I was working on. So if you're not really familiar with that, I have an icon generator, AI.com, where you can go in here, you can generate 
some icons and uh, this is the output of those. I think the, the Dolly API makes the icons look much better. Like I tried playing around with Stable Diffusion and making icons in here, but the icons just look like trash every single time. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but the Dolly API makes some slick looking icons. I won't lie about that. By the way, I do have a newsletter where I'm planning to kind of build a subset of this SaaS product and show you guys how to build it with Stripe, Next, Tailwind, Prisma, um, and deploy it out to a real environment. So if you guys are interested in learning how to do this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter and subscribe to my channel. And you'll see when I finally publish that course. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join. If you just want to find a place to ask questions or hang out with some other developers, that should also be in the description link below. Have a good day and happy coding.